With rack-mounted synthesizers, the shortcoming is, all too often, the lack of physical controls for real-time playability and logical patch parameter editing. Otherwise powerful rack synth instruments are likely to become relegated to mere preset patch collections unless there is some way to conveniently access all of the parameters stuffed below the too few buttons and encoders on the front panel. If it has a screen, it likely has menu diving and multifunction front panel controls that can frustrate even the most enthusiastic tech lover. MIDI-enabled instruments, processors, and other studio staples burst into nearly every gear manufacturer's product line by the late 80s. The convenience of MIDI and the high-tech, low-cost revolution brought innovation to synthesis and digital sampling and effects algorithms for musicians and studios at an unprecedented rate. PV recognized the need for an outboard controller to manipulate compact yet complex synthesizers, samplers, and effects processors that lacked a knob-per-function user experience. My hunt for a PV PC1600 MIDI controller has gone on in the background for a few years. While they do pop up for sale somewhat frequently, a well-maintained PC1600 that's reasonably priced isn't too common. I got what I consider a deal on this particular 1600 as it spewed out error messages while loading presets and displayed scrambled characters, often a dead battery indicator. On the upside, the factory 2.2 ROM is installed already, making this unit a PC1600X MIDI command station, plus original manuals, which I prefer over scanned internet PDFs. Teardown is three screws on the back panel that need to be removed, and then three screws on the front lip that have to be taken out. The nuts affixing the CV jacks to the back panel also need removal. A nut driver is an easy way to avoid scratching the painted metal of the case. With the 1600 face down, the bottom pan comes off hassle-free. The electronics are attached to the top panel. And here it's obvious there's been a battery leak onto the bottom pan as that area lines up with where the battery is located on the PC board. Luckily, the surrounding components are unaffected. PV has great email support. They supplied me with the battery part number and their parts department contact info, but I found a battery at half the price somewhere else at the same voltage with a few more milliamps. This corrosion is actually a good indication that the battery is responsible for the preset errors and the hieroglyphic display characters. To desolder the battery, the main PC board has to be removed. There are screws securing the power and MIDI jacks, as well as a heatsink, to the top panel. Now, I'm a huge fan of engineering that includes screw-reinforced power and MIDI connections. Build it like a tank. Pliers are needed to remove the lock nut holding the heat sink in place, and then the last screw comes out. Looks like there are two screws left to keep the PC board attached to the rest of the innards. Hmm. No go. The board won't release. Uh, I overlooked one additional screw nestled near the heatsink. Three data cables need disconnection, and then the board comes away with only a hard wire tether to the LCD board. I'll just reposition the chassis to set up the soldering gear. Before starting, I'll mark the solder points with a sharpie to reduce any confusion. Now, this isn't a desoldering and soldering tutorial. There are hundreds of pros out there on YouTube to show you the best practices. Desoldering a battery takes a steady hand, patience, and some practice before putting valuable gear under the iron. Burning a hole through the PCB or bridging contacts with sloppy technique will make a simple project into a nightmare. It's definitely worth getting good. The battery has three legs, so my goal is to clear residual solder from the through holes on the board so I can easily put the battery into place on the PCB. Once the battery is situated, it really is just a matter of soldering the legs into the PC board. No cold solder joints, and nothing moves. I'll trim the battery legs, and this repair is complete. Well, of course, the main PC board goes back into place, is secured by three primary screws, the data cables get reconnected, and the lock nut on the heatsink is reapplied. Then the screws securing the MIDI, CV, and power jack get put in. Overall, an easy repair with only a handful of fasteners to keep track of for this project. For 30 minutes and $20 worth of parts, I got a great deal for a PC-1600X under $200. Let's take a quick look around. 
Off the main board, a data cable and red-black voltage wire set connect to the LCD board, and just above, the encoder assembly harness loops underneath to connect to the remainder of the data input controls. The main board has a plunge-style power switch encased in clear plastic right next to the heatsink. And scanning across the back of the unit, we can see the MIDI input and output jacks right next to the CV foot pedal input jacks. There's the power button uh, right next to the input for the power supply. There's our heat sink and switch again. There is our newly installed 3.6 volt 80 milliamp battery. Should last us for a number of years. Two more data cables that I suppose are relaying controller data from the 16 faders and buttons. And here's the factory 2.2 ROM that updates this unit to a PC1600X. Version 2.3 is the last release PV made available. Might still be available from PV, but I never did call their parts department to check. I couldn't find a service manual online, and I have yet to see one appear on eBay or Reverb. It would be handy to have one in case things get more complicated than this. I may upgrade the display with a high contrast OLED screen from Lux Music at a later date, should this old one go kaput. Before putting the case back together, I attempted to clean the grit off the bottom pan. It really just amounted to surface rust, so I decided to leave it be and just cinch up the case by fastening everything back together. This device is solid and heavy for its size. It was designed to be rugged enough for use on the road, but this particular unit was only ever used in a studio as a drawbar controller for a PV Spectrum organ synth module, and I'd like to do the same when I find a used organ module for sale in the future. Until then, I have enough rack synths to put the 1600 through its paces. It's good practice to reset computerized gear after a fresh battery install, and this is easy enough. Hold Utility and Enter while powering up. The power lead is plugged into the device. Utility and Enter are pressed simultaneously while switching on the machine, and we get a confirmation that the memory has been reinitialized. Also, the characters displayed are no longer garbled nonsense, just like new. So now I'm ready to dive into the complexity of the PC-1600X. Having the manual close at hand will be a wise strategy. It has 16 faders, 16 programmable buttons, and two control voltage pedal inputs, all configurable to send messages to MIDI devices. Additionally, it can store 100 snapshots of fader positions, merge incoming data while generating its own data, and act as a MIDI filter. My intent is mostly for synth programming and tweaking parameters in real time. This should be fun.